Welcome to part four in my tutorial series on using Excel Power Query for advanced analytics. The topic of this particular video is Power Query's most excellent add conditional column feature. The focus of this particular video is going to be on how you can use a Power Query conditional column to take data that contains rare labels and then map them to more general characteristics. And this happens a lot in business data where you pull data from like maybe your customer database and there is a column that characterizes some aspect of the customer in some way and you have some rare categories. So for example, maybe you have gold customers and platinum customers and maybe like black level customers to borrow from American Express here. <laughs> American Express black card, right? Very, very rare. And those categories, those individual pieces of data that have that label are so rare that they can't actually be used productively in terms of advanced analytics. Because in general, advanced analytics is interested in taking a bunch of your data, a pile of your data, and finding the general most common rules, characteristics, patterns in the data that is indicative of something. So for example, in the running scenario we're using in this tutorial series, we are trying to find the most general characteristics in the data that are highly associated or highly predictive of survival on the Titanic. We're gonna take a look at the title column in this video. If you have a rare title, for example, Jonkier, which is a Dutch title of nobility, that's exceedingly rare. So there's not enough data for the advanced analytics to pick out a general pattern for Jonkiers. So what we'll do is use a conditional column to map Jonkier to a more general title, and then that'll allow us to conduct more powerful analyses. As usual, here I am in the workbook associated with this particular video in the tutorial series. And as always, if you're interested in getting this file, you can go ahead and check below the video in the description, and there'll be a link to the GitHub where you can download this file. And what you can see here is I have the worksheet that we ended up with at the last video, at the end of the last video, part three. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pivot table to examine a particular situation. As I mentioned before flipping over to Excel, the subject of this video is using Power Queries add conditional column feature to allow you to take an existing column of values and then map them down to a smaller subset. And this is something that you frequently need to do when you're processing your data, you're cleaning and wrangling your data for advanced analytics. And I'm going to demonstrate this idea using the title column, column N here, title. And if I click on the filter, you can see there's a whole bunch of different values that we saw in previous videos. We have captains and colonels and dons and yonkiers and ladies and majors and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna scroll back over and let's go ahead and create a pivot table of the titles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drag title down to the rows here. And you can see all the individual titles captain and colonel all the way down to the countess. And then we're gonna characterize the titles by not only the counts, but also the distribution of males to females. So what I'll do is I'll drag sex down to the column and you can see I've got female and male. And then I'll just drag sex down to the values and then I get the counts. And what we can see here, for example, is let's take a look at these particular values for title. So captain, colonel, and major. And collectively, these are military titles, obviously. And also collectively, we can see that they represent a very small count of passengers on the Titanic. So for example, we only have one captain in the data, we only have two colonels, and we only have two majors. Now, the individual labels are obviously way too rare to find any sort of general characteristic of saying like, hey, what are the patterns in, of how people with the title of captain survived on the Titanic? Because we only have two records, it's not enough. Two observations is not enough. So one thing you could do is use power queries conditional column to map those military titles to a general title of military. So in captain would literally be replaced with military, colonel would be replaced with military, and major would be replaced with military. And generally speaking, that's not a bad approach, except for in the fact that in this particular data set, we only have five military titles out of 891 rows of data. So once again, it's probably not going to be enough data for an advanced analytics technique to pick out and say, oh, okay, if you had a military title on the Titanic, this is the characteristics that were highly associated with survival in that particular case. 
So what we're going to do is make some assumptions here and map these military titles to an even more general, an even more common title. And the assumptions that we're going to make are, one, that these gentlemen are all adults, right? So that's the first thing we're going to map. We're going to assume because they're all male. You can see right here, there are no female military titles on, in the data. So they're all male. And it's a reasonable assumption that they're all going to be adults, even though we're not looking at the ages per se. And then secondarily, we're going to say, okay, since all of these military titles are adult males, they share a, a common characteristic, a common set of patterns with other adult males on the Titanic. Now, using those two assumptions, what we will do is use Power Query's conditional column feature to map Colonel and Captain and Major to the title of Mr. Because Mr., as you can see here, 517 out of 891 rows, is the title that essentially captures this idea of adult maleness. And we'll also do similar things with Reverend as well. But notice this. Notice this, this is super cool, right? We can't make that underlying, those two underlying assumptions automatically for the title of doctor. Because check this out. Even though the Titanic sailed in the early 1900s and female doctors were exceedingly rare at that particular point in time, look at that, we have a female doctor. One of the things that we're going to need to do when we use Power Query's add conditional column feature is we're gonna have to say, look, if you happen to be this particular doctor, the female doctor, we're gonna map you to a different title. And if you happen to be a male doctor, we're just gonna map you to Mr. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data and find out a little bit more about this female doctor. So if I scroll back over, I can go ahead and filter down to females here and then title of doctor right here, boom. And you can see right here, Dr. Alice Leader. Okay, so she's, 49 years old, she survived, she traveled in first class, first class, excuse me. And what we can divine from this naming convention here is this, Dr. Alice Leader had a surname that was different in the past. That's what these parentheses mean. She was before she got married, she was Dr. Al, well, maybe she wasn't a doctor then. Let's just say she was Alice Farnham before she got married. Maybe she got her doctorate afterwards, who knows? Anyway. This naming convention here tells us that she's a 49 year old female and she's married because this was her surname or her maiden name before she got married. So what we need to do when we use Power Query's conditional column feature is that we're gonna to need to map her first. We're gonna say, look, if, you're, if, if your name is Dr. Alice Leader, then your new title is going to be Mrs. Otherwise, if you have a title of doctor, your new title is gonna be Mr. because we're all the other talk doctors are adult males. So that's what we're going to do here. We're gonna create a conditional column in Power Query that maps all of these rare titles to, a, to four buckets, to four common titles. So they're gonna be Mrs. and Mr. and Miss and Master. So that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and just go over to Titanic Raw here, which is our original data. And to fire Power Query, all we do is go up to the data part of the ribbon, click on that, and we wanna select queries and connections because we have a query is embedded in the workbook here. And I just click on that and you can see here is our Power Query query. And if I hover over it, once again, I get a preview of what the table of data would look like if we ran all of the Power Query steps on the original Titanic table of data. But what we wanna do is we wanna edit it. So I can go over here to edit right here, and just click edit and that fires up the Power Query Editor. And not surprisingly, we want to go to the Add Column part of the ribbon here in the Power Query Editor, and we wanna select Conditional Column. Now, Conditional Columns are basically the application of if to the data. And if you're an Excel user of any sort of experience, more than likely you have used the if function in Excel worksheets many, many times. Conceptually, it works exactly the same. The syntax is a little bit different. What you actually type is a little bit different in Power Query than it is in Excel, but conceptually, it's exactly the same thing as I'm gonna demonstrate right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click a conditional column. And what happens is, is that Power Query fires up a nice editor for me to use here to create my conditional column, where I can put in all of my if logic to actually take the data from original column of titles and then map it to what I'm gonna call new title here. So I'm gonna create a new column called new title. Here's the thing that you need to remember when you're using conditional columns in Power Query. You'll put a bunch of 
if conditions in here, a bunch of checks of the data, right? If the value is this, then do this, else do that, that sort of thing. Here's how Power Query works. It finds the first if statement or the first rule in your conditional column that applies to the data, and that's the one that it uses. And let me show you what I mean by this with the title column. So if we start with the title column and we say, hey, if the title equals doctor, so if you have the title of doctor, then I'm going to map that to Mr. Now here's the problem. We know that there's one female doctor. And if we add an additional clause here, if we add another data check, another if statement, another rule, and if I say, hey, if your name happens to be Dr. Alice Leader, and then we say, hey, so you're gonna be a missus. If we have it set up this way, this rule never gets tripped because Dr. Alice Leader's title value is doctor. So it'll be erroneously mapped to Mr. Because the first thing that works for Dr. Alice's data is this rule right here, this first if statement. So what we need to do is we need to take this thing and we need to move it up. So what you do is you can just click on these buttons here and you can move it up or move it down. And notice that the first thing we check for is we need to say, look, hey, is your name Dr. Alice Leader? If it is, then your title is Mrs. Otherwise, if your title is Doctor, your new title is gonna be Mr. And notice how we've now structured the logic so that the first rule that matches Dr. Ellis is detected and the mapping that we need is correct. And let me just keep showing you how you do this, right? So this is pretty easy. It's a bit tedious, I won't lie. You just do the same thing. Hey, else if your title equals, let's say captain, we're gonna map that to Mr. Then we add another one. Then you say, hey, if your title is Colonel, then you're Mr., so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this out with all of the mappings that we need to take all of the original title data and then condense it down into those four values of Mrs., Mr., Miss, and Master. But I'm not gonna make you watch me do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump cut to show you the final product of what we're gonna be doing. Here we are. I've got the add conditional column for new title completely filled out. And what you can see here is, once again, first and foremost, we check to see if record in question is Dr. Alice Leader. And if it is, we map to Mrs. Otherwise, we then do captains and colonels and dons and doctors and yonkers. And you can see here all of the mappings to Mr. You can see all of the different mappings here. And everything works out great. Now notice this though, I don't have any specific checks anywhere for Mr., for Mrs., for Miss, or Master, because I don't need them. All I need to do is tell Power Query, hey look, if any of these rules up here, if any of these many rules do not qualify, else I'll put something differently. And the cool thing I can do here in Power Query is I could say, look, you know what? Just go ahead and output the current value of title. Because if your value is already Mr., just spit it out. If your value is already misses, just spit it out, so on and so forth. So now I can just click OK. Power Query works its magic. And if I scroll all the way over, you can see the new title column right here. And if I click on the drop down here, I can see I only have four individual values. Now, this is awesome. This is awesome because I've now taken a bunch of relatively rare categories, rare titles, and then map them to the more general categories of adult male, for example, adult female, so on and so forth. And let me show you what you can do with this using a pivot table with this new column of data, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and close and load. And if I just go ahead and refresh this table of data here, what'll happen is, is that I just right clicked on the table, clicked refresh, and what it does is it reruns the Power Query query. And notice I get my new table, the new title in here. This is, this is awesome, right? This is absolutely awesome. Now, of course, what I'll need to do is refresh my, power, my pivot table as well, because I want to use that for lots of fun. And let me go ahead and just make this bigger so you can see it here. And at the very bottom, you can see I've got new title. Now what I can do here is let's go ahead and look at things by P class. So we put P class in here and then we put new title in here. Awesome. And then of course what we care about is survived. So let's drop new survived here and new survived here. And let's change it to, let's change the field settings to be percentage of row totals. Boom. And now we've got this very much 
aggregated, more generalized understanding of what's going on in the data. So for example, adult males in general in first class survived at 35%. They only survived at 8% and they survived at only 11.29% in third class. Masters, of course, look at this, 100% survival, so on and so forth. This is the kind of power that you get using things like Power Query's conditional column feature to map rare values, rare labels, rare categories into more generalized, higher level buckets of information. You can start to see the patterns pop a lot more, which is what you need for your advanced analytics to work most effectively. When the next tutorial in the series is ready, it will show up either here or here. In the meantime, I'll throw up a couple of videos around Excel data analysis that you likely will find quite interesting. If you find this content useful, would you mind doing me a favor and just smashing that like button? That'll tell the YouTube algorithm that this is good content and it will get distributed to other professionals that might find it useful. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.